how to thrive in a relationship. In an RV. Make sure you do things with each other. You're with your significant other because you enjoy them. And you and enjoy their company. And their company. So one of the things that we do when we go to a new area, we'll do an online search and we'll pick out what type of activities we want to do. Whether it's going to local malls, that's what she likes to do. Whether it's going hiking, biking. Children's museum, the zoo. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be going and doing some crazy adventure because you want to compromise. It's also good to explore the campground that you're at. You can, you know, take your bike out. You can walk around, find some trails, go with the family. There's lots of things to do and you don't even have to leave. Yeah, it's a free activity and it brings you closer together. And what we've noticed is when we go for walks around the campground, we end up having really good conversations. Sometimes, because sometimes I do all the talking, and that is not a conversation. And one of our favorite things is to look at the different rigs. That's when it. the windows are up and it's starting to get dark, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably talk about that. No, it's creepy. Yeah, she's kind of a creeper. A little bit. Yeah. So don't leave your shades up. <laughs> when it's starting to get dark. Yeah, because you can see right you. in. She'll find you and she'll <laughs> look in. Because she likes to look at the inside, the interior, how people decorated. And you can totally be a creeper in the evenings if people leave their windows open. Yeah. And we are probably guilty of that as well. So I'm sure there's a few people that creep on us. Yep. People always ask, isn't it hard to get along when you live in such a small space? Well, one trick to keeping that peace in the house is make sure you spend some time apart. It's always great to do things together, but every now and then you, def <laughs> you definitely want to have some independence for example eric here he likes to go hiking he'll go out on a canoe or a kayak at the campground if they have some type of body of water he also likes to go fishing and do surfing. that type of stuff surfing well yeah you like to yeah that too if if there's waves nearby yeah mm -hmm. The other night, this is a good example, she went to the movies by herself because they were playing that new Fifty Shades movie. <laughs> I didn't have any desire to see it. Me and a bunch of other ladies yeah. go check out the movie. But on top of that, it's really nice because Eric is such a great dad. He stays home while Ella is asleep so that I can go and do some things that I typically wouldn't be able to do because we have a baby. So. Yep. It was good. a win-win. I do a lot of extreme sports and activities. It doesn't have to take away from alone time. You can wake up and it's just the price you have to pay. You can wake up and go before sunrise and do your adventure bright and early. And he's back before we even wake up in the morning. So, right. Cause she's not nice. getting up at sunrise. No, but. But you're sure, gonna soon. Shortly after with the baby. <laughs> she's gonna be waking up at sunrise very soon because we're on the East Coast and our baby is on East Coast time. So. We'll, you're going to lose three hours. Eight o'clock is going to be five. Don't remind me. <gasps> Make sure you split up the responsibilities. And the clearer you can get about what task the other person is going to own. The more you can hold them accountable and yell at them when they don't do it. Just kidding. When we get to a new campground, Eric will do the outside stuff. I'll mostly do the inside stuff. He'll clear out the toy hauler area because that's where we keep a lot of our bigger stuff when we move. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have those, you know, designated roles so we don't step on each other's toes and we can get things done a lot faster. Yeah, real fast. When things get heated, they'll cool off. What I mean is it's natural that at some point, moods, hormones, lack of sleep, when things go wrong, when you make mistakes like hit two trees, things are going to flare up. I didn't get heated. No, because we took our own advice. It what, could we have. We laughed at each other? Yeah. Or rather, I laughed at you. Me, yeah. I wasn't hitting you. And I laughed at me. But but this is that's actually a really good example. Because when that happens, recognize it. And when you realize that you're getting heated or you've got a little bit of a, of a mood a or a tude, <laughs> go outside. That's a good time to, to cool off. Go walk around the campground, uh, and it's a fantastic opportunity to go do that thing apart that you enjoy. 
You probably know your significant other really well. She can read my mind a lot. I'm not very good at reading hers, but I can tell her mood. So if you recognize that the other person has a short temper, because often you can recognize it before they can recognize it in themselves, that's when maybe you should go outside and not wait for them to recognize Run it. Run and hide. Well. Yeah, I mean, how could you be in a bad mood when you're walking that thing? Hi. Got to keep the spice alive. Go and we're on not, dates. What? We're not talking about spicy food. You could do that too. Spicy food's really good. But yeah, go on dates. Get out, explore the area, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. I like to pull up Yelp and I just go and whatever we're looking to do. So say we want to go to a restaurant. I'll look up restaurants. I'll check the reviews, see what kind of food we want to eat. Yep. And try somewhere new. Of course there. One thing I like to do is switch up who decides. Now. I always decide. What are you talking about? We'll do like a three to one ratio where <laughs> she'll choose three times and I'll choose one, but hey. He'll choose it and then I veto. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you compromise on where you guys go camping. I like to go in the middle of nowhere and go boondocking where we can't see or hear anybody. And I like to go to a campground where they have heated pools. She likes to go to resorts where we have heated pools. And nearby shopping. Yeah, so typically she'll like to stay within 20 minutes or so of really nice shopping malls. Not necessarily a shopping mall, but just shopping civilization. Right. So we'll compromise. We'll go to a resort typically for three weeks. And often on the way to our next resort, we'll stay in the middle of nowhere for a few days or boondock so I can get my adventure. Or if we don't do that, we'll just make sure that the resort is in an area that I've chosen where I can go take day trips to national parks or really nice state parks, bucket list locations. So I can still have my adventure and she can still have all her amenities. You've got to make sure you take care of your health. Mm -hmm. One of the leading causes of mood swings is not drinking enough water. And taking care of your mind and your body is within your control. And it's really tough to show your significant other the excitement, the fun, and love that they deserve if you're not happy yourself and if you don't feel good. So you've got to take care of you before you can take care of them. Make sure that you communicate. Experts say that the number one leading cause of happiness in life is your relationship with your significant other. They also say that the number one factor in your happiness with your significant other is the quality of your communication. So it's a simple equation. Quality relationships come from quality communication equals your happiness. So if you wanna be happy, communicate with the people that you love. I talk to Zoe all the time. We hope these tips will help you in your own relationship. If you have anything you want to add, leave it in the comment below.